It's time for another Dice Tower Review with John Richard. Howdy gamers, greetings from Indianapolis, Indiana, the gaming capital of the world. It's time for another board game review with me, Indiana John. Today we're taking a look at La Isla, which as you know is Spanish for the Isla, and is a new game by Stefan Feld, one of my all-time favorite board game designers. As you can see over my shoulder here, I have the trifecta of Bora Bora, Trajan, and Bruges, three of my favorite Feld games. So I was very excited to get my hands on La Isla. So in this game, you're playing explorers who are on an island, or Isla I guess, and have found some previously thought to be extinct species of animals. And so you're exploring around the island, and I guess you're trying to capture the animals, maybe to take them back and sell them? I, it's really difficult to tell, but hey, it's a Stefan Feld game, so the theme is probably an afterthought anyway. So let's take a look at the setup and gameplay of La Isla, and let's see if we can answer an important gaming question, which is, it's Feld, but is it fun? Now this is the main setup for La Isla, and as you can see, it's a very colorful presentation here. Uh, we have a uh, island board, which you uh, create every single time. There's, there's sort of these puzzle piece map tiles here that you go together, there's 10 of those, and then there's a little circle that goes in the middle here, so that's gonna be random every time. And then you have all of these uh, animal tokens, and there are five different colors, and the game comes with 40 of them. You're gonna take 35 of them and place them under the board randomly, leaving a set of five, one of each color left over. So that makes for a nice random assortment uh, of uh, animal tokens onto the board, and that's what you're trying to acquire in this game are these animals. Alongside that, you have a tracking area, uh, like so many other Feld games that have uh, ways of tracking random things. Uh, this game really only has one thing, or two things that you're tracking, I guess. You're tracking your score, so this is where your little uh, player marker is going to go that will uh, indicate your score that's around the outside. And then in the middle here, there is the animal track, which is going to uh, change during the game. You'll have opportunities to move these tokens up this track and that will increase the value of each of the animals as far as how many points they're gonna be worth at the end of the game. So, um, and then there's thresholds that they'll cross after a certain number of, of, um, of spaces that will get them certain points. The highest that you can have is five. So that's that. You have uh, five resources in the game. These are generic sort of resources in five colors. They don't really represent any particular thing uh, that I know of. They're just cubes. And the main mechanic in this game is some interesting card play that we'll talk about in a second. So the game comes with a really large deck of cards. So that is the uh, initial setup for the game. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at what each individual player is going to get. So here's the individual player setup. Every player is going to get one of these interesting little card holders. You have to kind of put it together at the beginning uh, with these little tabs. But it's sort of a little pocket or a pouch where um, during the course of the game you're going to be playing uh, these little cards and there are special abilities on the tops of the cards and you have an opportunity to have up to three of those showing at any one time. So when you play those cards they're going to get tucked under uh, underneath here so that the top part of the card is visible and you can see the special ability. So that's really the only purpose for the little pouches but that, that's kind of a cool thing. Um, so there's four different areas on the board that represent the four different uh, phases of the game and we'll go over that in just a second. But um, the th uh, phase C is going to be the part where you put dudes on the board. So that's where your dudes are going to be hanging out. Everybody starts off with five. Uh, there are a couple cards that allow you to get a couple of more, but um, in a lot of games you'll just end up with that uh, five. You're also going to get one of each color resource and um, the resources are how you're going to get guys onto the board. And you're also going to get one of these five large animal tokens. Um, they're not large animals, they're actually large tokens. So uh, each one of these represents two of this kind of, of each kind of animal. So um, these are randomized at the start and everybody gets one. So this one be, would be representative of two uh, golden toads or whatever those things are. And so this helps you to sort of drive your strategy in a particular direction because you already have two of this kind of animal and um, that track will help to determine uh, what that animal is going to be worth. So uh, this is the main setup for each player. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, take a look at what a turn in La Isla looks like. So at the beginning of each round of La Isla, each player will be dealt three cards. And there's going to be sort of a planning phase where you have to decide what you're going to do with them. Uh, there are four phases in each round, and three of those will involve uh, usage of these cards. So what you're going to be doing when you get your planning step is to figure out which card are you going to put into each area. And you'll put cards face down for A, B, and D. 
and then we'll go. The, you'll go through each of these uh, phases and reveal your cards, and then perform the action. So, in order to understand how that works, you really need to understand how the cards work. So, let's take a look a little closer at one of the cards. So each card in La Isla is divided up into three sections which correspond with the three of the phases in the game, A, B, and D. Uh, phase C is where you put guys onto the board. And so um, in phase A, everyone's gonna reveal their card and it'll have some sort of a special ability on it that you will then tuck into the card holder uh, that comes in, in your play area. And then that ability will be active for, for you uh, until you choose to cover that up. So, and there's lots of different uh, um, special abilities in the game. There's ton tons of them. There's lots of iconography too. Uh, that might take a little while to get used to, but for example, this one is saying that every time you put a dude onto a green area of the board, you get a resource of your choice. Uh, this one says that you get an extra uh, card in your hand. Normally you get only three. This one will give you four, so you have more choices when you're making your planning. Uh, this one is saying that every time that you get a brown resource during the B phase, you get a second one. So you get two instead of one. And uh, this one says that every time you get a gray resource, then you're gonna get two points uh, in addition to that. Uh, this final one here is you, uh, every time you uh, place a dude onto a space where there is another dude, then you uh, only have to pay one resource instead of the normal two. So those are just some examples of uh, abilities in the game. There's lots of other ones, and there's even a, a resource sheet that'll help you to kind of pick through the iconography. But they're all cool things that you can do that will make things uh, cheaper and better and get you more points and more resources. So phase A is gonna be revealing this uh, ability and then putting it into your uh, card slot there. And so, like I said, in this area here, you have three spaces. So, if, you know, if I you do that in one turn, put that one there on a second turn, and this one on a third turn, once you come up to a, your fourth turn and you reveal a card um, in phase A, then you have to choose which one of those you're going to cover up, because you can only have three abilities active at any one time, and you cannot have two of the same ability showing. So that's gonna be phase A. Phase B is a, a very simple. Everybody reveals their card, and you're gonna get the resource that's on the card right there. Uh, and you'll just, you can just get that cube. Then we move on to phase C. And this is where we're going to be using resources to put guys on the board. Phases A and B are simultaneous. Phase C is gonna go in player order because it really does matter, um, you know, the player order um, as far as what you're putting on the board. So let's take a look back at the board here and see how we put dudes onto the map. So phase C involves putting guys onto the map. And this is the way that you're going to acquire the animals that you need to score points in this game. And this is the way it works. Um, you're, on your turn, you can take two resources of a particular color, and if you discard those resources, then you can put one of your guys onto the map onto that particular color. So in this case, I could put a guy on green because I discarded two green cubes. So I have a guy in green there now. Now on a later turn, let's say that I spend two yellow resources and then I put a guy right here. Well now, I have essentially surrounded this particular animal. You see that there, I need two people to surround it and I'm the first person to do that, so I get to take this animal token and put it into my supply. And that's going to get me two points immediately. And depending on how, what, where this particular animal ends up on the animal track, um, I will get points for him at the end of the game as well. Um, so uh, there are spaces like this that are fairly easy because you only need two, um, but then there are uh, you know, spaces like this one here that requires four of your guys to be able to completely surround it. So you would need a guy here and a guy here, which would allow you to grab this one because you've surrounded him here. And at the same time, other players can be placing uh, their uh, dudes onto the map at this uh, as well. And so it's sort of a race to see uh, who can get, the, uh, get there first and get the animal tokens that they need. So uh, you only have five guys to start off with and you may only end up with five for the entire game. So um, once you uh, have too many on the map, you can actually have to pick up ones that are already on the map and move them around. So these guys are gonna be moving all around, picking up these animals. So that is basically how that works. And that's how phase C is going to work. You're gonna go around in player turn order and spend your resources and place your guys onto the map. And if you can, take animal tokens. Now phase D has to do with the animal track here. And so uh, every player is going to simultaneously reveal their card and we'll show which animal that they have here that they're going to um, move up on the track. So we got the little golden toad here. So that player is going to then take this track here and move it up one space. So, and that's simultaneously, everybody's gonna be moving up. 
Now this, uh, as these go up, like I said, as you cross these thresholds, you're, they're going to be worth a particular value. So once the golden toad gets here, then he's going to be worth one point every every toad token. And then once you get past this threshold, uh, worth two, and so forth and so on, up all the way up to five. Now this is also the way that you determine when the end of the game is. And it depends on uh, the number of players that you have, but if, uh, and for example, in a four player game, you'll look at the end of this phase after all of those tokens have been moved for that turn and you're going to add up the total of all of the values of the animals. And if they add up to at least 11, then that's gonna be the end of the game. It's nine for a three player game, seven for a two player game. So in this case, we've got uh, two, four, seven, nine, 10. So that would not be the end of the game. We'd probably do one more round and uh, or possibly more. And then once that reaches 11, then you, that's the end of the game. And then you do final scoring. So let's talk about final scoring. So during the course of the game, you're gonna be getting points whenever you pull animals off of the board, then you'll get the points that are on the board for that. So you'll be keeping track of that on the scoring track throughout the game. But at the very end of the game, you're gonna take a look at all of the animal tokens that you've collected. And this is how that they, they score. If you have collected a full set of all five different animals, then that's gonna be worth 10 points. Then you're going to take a look on the track here and determine the value of each of the animal tokens and you'll get points accordingly. So this little muskrat guy is gonna be worth two points. Um, the little rat cat guy over here, he's gonna be worth um, three points and so forth. And so then, then for, for the golden toads here, this is his starting token, which is worth uh, two, two of those toads. So he has four golden toads and each of those are gonna be worth three points. So that's gonna be 12 points there. So you'll add up all of those. You're also going to get uh, one point for every two resource cubes. Uh, they don't have to be the same color, but any, every two resource cubes you have left over is gonna be worth one point. And then that will be your final score. Whoever has the the most points is the winner of La Isla. So that is La Isla. And uh, what do I think of this game? I think of this game as a lot of fun. And I think it's a little bit of a departure from Stefan Feld, who usually designs some pretty uh, strategic, brain burnery sort of games where you're trying to put together that, of course, point salad where there's lots of ways that you can get points and lots of paths to victory. This game is a lot more straightforward in that you uh, pretty much have one path to victory. You're trying to get those animals and get them in the right combinations. I really like the way that you can manipulate that animal track so you can increase the value of particular animals and that will help to drive your decisions as to what you want to try to capture on the board. Um, the simultaneous gameplay with the cards keeps everybody involved, which I think is a lot of fun. So the rounds go very, very quickly. And um, I also like the fact that uh, the cards do multiple things. Now, one uh, sort of uh, criticism of the game, I guess, would have to do with these uh, reference cards that come with the game that would sort of explain all the iconography and all the different things that those um, phase A abilities do. And they are very small and uh, very difficult to read. And, and I think there's only a couple of them per language. So you'd need to know about three languages to be able to utilize all these real well. So I'm not so sure why they didn't make a bigger sheet with these or some reference cards. Uh, but that's just a small point of the uh, production of the game. Uh, the design of the game is excellent though. I think that it's, it's going to be a really good family or gateway game. Um, this is one I think you can really pull out with families, whereas a lot of other Feld games might be a little bit more of a barrier to entry. So I think this one is great. Uh, if you're looking for that deep Feld experience, <laughs> you may not find it in this game, but I think this is a really great addition uh, to someone's collection who likes uh, you know strategic games but lighter games. This one's going to hit my table an awful lot. That is La Isla. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Yeah. Yeah.